Hello everyone. I am Gautam N, Associate Professor, Department of Tripoli, Vidyavardhika College of Engineering, Mysuru. So let's get started with uh, Module 2. So in the last session, we had discussed about how to find an inductance in a single circuit and also in a double circuit lines. You also got to know what is a single circuit line, what, what the characteristics of a double circuit line, and you were able to compare a single circuit and double circuit line. We also found the inductance in a single circuit line and also in double circuit line, and you were able to make out the differences with, between a single circuit and double circuit line. Also, you all got to know about transposition, the benefits of transposition, why is transposition necessary for, for a transmission line, and also how to find out the value of inductance in a transposed lines. So in this session, let's get started with capacitance. So finding the value of capacitance in a single phase three and three phase lines, if it is a three phase line, you should also consider uh, symmetrical and unsymmetrical spacing to, in order to find the value of capacitance. Also, before all that, we should know electric field intensity due to an infinite charge. So that equation will make us will make things very easy, wherein we can find out the value of capacitance at ease. It will be it is the fundamental concept. One should know before we talk about capacitance in single phase and three phase lines. So let's begin the session. So to start with, we will start with electric field intensity due to infinite line charge. So what is a charge, by the way? So charge is nothing but, it's a property of matter that experiences a force when you place it in an electromagnetic field. You all know inductance arises due to magnetic field and capacitance, concept of capacitance will be there in, if it is an electric field. Likewise, a charge is nothing but a property of matter which contains a lot of with particles. So it experiences a, a force when you place it in a magnetic field. So we'll also be using one more uh, concept called as, one more law called as Gauss's law. What is this Gauss's law? It does nothing but it describes the static electric field. Okay, that is normally experienced by the distribution of electric charges. Okay. Gauss law is nothing but Gauss's law is nothing but you will be able to uh, describe the static electric field by considering or by considering the distribution of electric charges in a material or in a wire. That is the exact meaning of Gauss's law. So using a Gauss's law, you will be able to find out the electric field intensity. So let's begin. Uh, so when you consider a long wire having a charge of Q, coulombs per meter, the electric flux density at a point A, that is R meters away from the conductor, as shown in the figure, okay? So this is the uh, diagram wherein we will be using this diagram, you know, to find the electric field intensity due to infinite line charge. So you find a position A, which is at a, uh, a distance of radius R, and Q denotes the charge, okay? So over here in this expression, so that you will be considering a closed integral. So closed integral of electric flux density. Again, for a surface, whatever you have considered as ds here, that is the reason you have considered closed integral along with the surface is equal to the total charge covered by the surface. So closed integral, normally whenever you see a closed integral, you will definitely consider the differential area with respect to its direction that's normal to the surface. So this is usually considered when you apply a closed integral. So this gives rise to a charge, total charge Q. So next, moving on further, you will also consider a cylindrical shell of radius R and length L with a wire along with its axis. As already mentioned, the charge enclosed by the cylindrical shell you will be considering it as Q into its length L. The surface area, since it is a closed circle, you will be considering it as 
along considering its circumference, it's 2 pi r into its length. Again, when you apply Gauss's law to this equation, you will get an expression considering that expression as applied previously, it is the flux density that you will be considering into 2 pi r l, that is a closed integral part along with its length, which is equal to q, the charge into its length. The closed integral part over here is d into 2 pi r l into l, which is equal to the charge q over there over here is q into its length. That was a general expression, whatever that we wrote, the whatever we saw, the equation one. So the same thing, when you consider a cylindrical shell of radius r along with its uh, with the length l, with its axis, you will be applying that part and you will be using Gauss's law as explained in equation one uh, in order to uh, solve this particular electric field intensity due to an infinite charge. The diagram that was shown over here. So this diagram, for this diagram, we are supposed to apply Gauss's law and know the and know the expression for D, that is nothing but electric flux density. Okay, so for this diagram, as explained already, you as you will be considering a cylindrical shell of radius R along with its length L with its wire as its axis. So this, the charge enclosed over there in the general expression for Q, for this particular case, it is Q into its length. But the closed integral part, if you are applying for the particular diagram, considering the general equation, you will get it as D, that is electric flux density into the closed integral part, that is the circumference, is nothing but 2 pi R L into the length, when you will be getting it, which is equal to the charge into its length. So the final expression over here, over here is D is nothing but Q divided by 2 pi R coulomb per meter square. D is nothing but uh, Q divided by 2 pi R coulomb per meter square. So this electric field intensity E is related to flux density by the relation as already, as you all know, it's nothing but D into D, which is equal to epsilon into the electric field intensity E. So epsilon is nothing but epsilon naught into epsilon R. So if the air medium is air, epsilon R is considered as one, therefore epsilon is equal to epsilon naught. So therefore electric flux density is equal to considering the value of epsilon naught along with the value of electric field intensity. So here D is not just equal to E, you should also consider the value of epsilon naught. The, so as to say this, the potential at any point, whatever the potential you, if you consider it generally, in a general sense, if you want to define it, the potential, how will you find the potential? It's nothing but the potential at any point, is nothing but the moving of you know, the work done in moving a unity unit positive charge from infinite infinity to a particular point. So what is, how do you find the potential uh, of, a, of, a, of a charge at a particular point? You need to know the work done in moving a charge, so in moving a unit positive charge from its infinite position to a particular position, whatever that we are interested in. So the expression for electric field intensity that we get from because of that simplification is E is nothing but Q divided by 2 pi epsilon naught R into R volt per meter. Okay, so from the previous equation, you know the value of D that is nothing but Q divided by 2 pi R. Along with that, you will be considering the epsilon naught value over here. So electric potential over here is Q divided by 2 pi epsilon naught into R into volt per meter. So how do, how do we consider these? The two points A1 and A2 over here, the two points o, A1 and A2 over here are considered at a distance of R1 and R2 respectively from the charge, where R2 is greater than R1, that is point A1 will be at higher potential when compared to the other point that is very much closer to the charge. The other two points, the potential difference, if you consider that between the two points A1 and A2, again, it's nothing but as by the general definition, work done in moving a positive unit positive charge from 
an infinite position to a particular point that you are interested in. Over here, it's nothing but work done and moving a unit of positive charge from position A to, to A1, which can be determined with respect to this. The two points, whatever you consider, it's potential between two points, one and two is nothing but the distance of radii R1 and R2, that is, you consider it for integral, along with the electric field potential with respect to the whatever the particular distance that we have considered, the smaller distance, that is dr. So on simplification, the expression on substitution, substituting the value of e, you will get q divided by 2 pi epsilon naught r. And again, if you remove the constant to the other side, this will be the same. And applying limits, this will be the expression. That is nothing but q divided by 2 pi epsilon naught ln r2 by r1 into v. What does the negative sign over here indicates? The negative sign in this expression indicates that the charge is moving from, a uh, charge is moving against the direction of electric field. So let's move on. With this introduction, let's move on to the capacitance of a single phase line. So how do you find the capacitance between the two conductors? So it's defined as the ratio of charge on the conductors to its potential difference between the conductors. So how do you define capacitance? C is nothing but, you know, it's nothing but Q divided by V. General expression for Q is charge divided by voltage. Similarly here, when you have to find out two conductors, means you can consider C12. It is nothing but the charge is ratio of charge on the conductors to the potential difference between the conductors. So how do you start with deriving the expression for capacitance? in a single phase line. In order to derive the expression for capacitance in a single phase line, first we need to assume that the charge is uniformly distributed over the surface of the conductor and that so such that the flux has to be radial in order to derive. I repeat, you need to assume that the charge is evenly distributed over the surface of the conductor such that whatever the flux that we will be assuming in order to find has to be radial. We also assume, we the effect of earth over here is negligible. So moving on with uh, moving on to the uh, moving on to the derivation, as already mentioned, you have supposed to consider two conductors, conductor one and conductor two, at a radius r. So when you consider conductor one and conductor two at a radius r, you will assume that th that's separated by a distance d, and this distance is greater than the value of radius r. You will assume that the charge density on conductor 1 is nothing but q1 coulomb per meter and the charge on the conductor 2 is q2 coulomb per meter. So what would be the potential difference between conductor 1 and 2 considering the charge q1? Okay, first you should find out the potential difference that is what v, that is whatever you found electric field intensity expression from using that on a general sense, whatever we studied in the beginning of today's session. So you will be applying that considering conductor one and two with respect to charge Q1. So what will be the expression here? So V12 over here is nothing but Q1 divided by epsilon two pi epsilon naught into ln D divided by R. There we, what did what's the expression over there? It was Q1 divided by two pi epsilon ln R2 by R1. However, you consider whether R2 by R1 or R1 by R2, it's left to you. However, you assume that the particular radii of the conductor. Over here, it's there are two distances. One distance is D and the other distance is R. So in this case, a potential difference between conductor 1 and 2 with respect to charge Q1 is nothing but charge Q1 divided by 2 pi epsilon naught into ln D divided by R. So how do you find out? the potential difference between conductor 1 and 2, that is with respect to considering the charge Q2 in the similar manner. Over here, it is nothing but V12 is equal to minus V21 because it's moving in the opposite direction. Negative sign indicates over here. So over here, the expression is minus Q2 divided by 2 pi epsilon naught ln D divided by R. So this is the expression for potential difference of conductor 1 and 2 due to charge Q2. So then, so then from superposition, what you will be able to find from the superposition, the potential difference between two 
one conductor one and two you need to add the two equations whatever you got with in three point a and three point b the addition you get it as that is v12 is the sum value wherein you are adding v12 with, with respect to charge q1 and v12 with respect to charge q2 on addition 3.c will be the expression that we obtain so if it is a single phase line since we are finding capacitance for a single phase line you can equate the charges over here it is q1 which is equal to q and again q2 is equal to minus q negative as already mentioned the effect of symbol minus so on substituting this what would what do we get so this is the final expression that we can obtain and on simplification so you will get the expression as q divided by 2 pi epsilon naught ln d by r plus q divided by 2 pi epsilon naught ln d by r so why it we have replaced because in the previous equation you got minus q 2 pi epsilon naught ln small r divided by d so that can be interchanged as this on further simplification you get q divided by pi epsilon naught ln d by r v so what will be the value of capacitance between the conductors now at last so you know that uh, capacitance is nothing but charge ratio of charge divided by the voltage potential difference since it is with respect to conductor one and two this will be the final expression that is pi epsilon naught divided by ln d by r farads per meter so equation phi over here gives the value of line to line capacitance between the conductors equation phi will give you the value of line to line capacitance between the conductors one and two so it is also necessary to find out the capacitance of the conductor not just between line to line you should also find it out with respect to neutral so can so capacitance with respect to neutral will be that will be twice the capacitance that what that you obtained for, for two lines that is line to line okay that expression will be c between a line to neutral it can either be line one to neutral or line two to neutral so this will be the expression two pi epsilon naught divided by ln d by a farads per meter whereas if it is line to line it is just pi epsilon naught divided by ln d by r farads per meter if it is with respect to line to neutral it is two pi epsilon naught divided by ln d divided by r farads per meter so now let's move on we just considered two conductors one and two and we found out the capacitance first we found out the voltage and then we found out the capacitance so now we are supposed to find the potential know the value of potential difference between two conductors in a group of conductors for that case n parallel conductors are considered as shown in the figure so for that case n parallel conductors are considered as shown in the figure okay so we will assume the first and foremost thing over here is we should assume that the sum of charges is zero you will be assuming that the sum of charges is zero let's consider the distance between the conductors are much greater than their radii like as we assume to find out the value of capacitance between two conductor there d was greater than much many more times greater than the value of r similarly here also we should you should consider that the distance between the conductors are much greater compared to their radii and that the charges are uniformly distributed as assumed previously here also you are supposed to assume that the charges are uniformly distributed on the surface and also along its length now we shall find out the potential difference between conductors a and b due to charge qa on a conductor a if the last derivation is if you would have got the previous derivation so this derivation is exactly the replica of the previous so we have again there it was one and two here you have a and b but you have a group of n, n number of conductors over there here over there it was just one and two but you should you are again supposed to consider one and two and find out the group of them at the last okay because why you should consider only one and two because that is a reference we have we have got from the previous derivation so v a b is nothing but the charge uh, on a conductor a divided by 2 pi epsilon naught into ln d by r over here it is d a b by r a so what is d a b it's a distance between the conductors a and b and r a is nothing but the radius of conductor a so how will you find out the potential difference 
between conductors A and B due to the charge QB on a conductor B. So this will be the expression. So there it was VAB with respect to QA. In the similar grounds, you are supposed to find out the value of VAB with respect to conductor B. So it is QB divided by 2 pi epsilon naught lan RB by DAB. So how you found out in previously V12 and V21. V12 is equal to V21 with a negative sign. Similarly here, let us consider the distance between conductor C and conductor A as DAC and the distance between the conductor C and the conductor B as DBC because you have considered a number of conductors here. So again in the similar grounds you are supposed to find out the potential difference between conductor A and B due to the charge and Q, due to the charge QC on conductor C. Okay, the expression for that is VAB is nothing but QC divided by 2 pi epsilon naught lan DBC divided by DAC. Okay, here you don't have R, you have the distance, the, R, the value of D is more than R. So that is the reason you are replacing over here is DBC divided by DAC. In the similar manner, you, you are supposed to find out the potential difference between conductors A and B due to the charge on all other conductors. If you follow the same, you can find out the potential difference between conductors A and B due to charge key, Q, due to charge Q on all other conductors. This potential difference between conductors A and B due to charges on the conductor, as you applied superposition over here, here also, whatever that we have found, I explained till now, for that, if superposition is applied, you can get the final expression. So that expression is this. VAB is nothing but charge with respect to Q, charge with respect to B, charge with respect to C, etc., etc., up till the end, because there are group of conductors that are considered over here and denotes group of conductors. In a similar fashion, you can also find the potential difference between the conductors due to the charges of all the conductors as already mentioned. Okay, so moving on to the next part over here is, you're supposed to find out, so till now whatever we discussed was a, uh, was a single phase line that is between two conductors or between a conductor and a neutral point, line to line capacitance that we have discussed and you also, we have also discussed the capacitance between a line and the neutral. And we also consider group of conductors. So what would be the case of potential di uh, difference? How is it di distributed if you have considered a group of uh, charges? Okay, so let's move on to the next part. That is capacitance of a three-phase lines with unsymmetrical spacing. So if you have understood uh, the inductance of a three-phase line with um, symmetrical spacing on a similar grounds, but here you will be considering the electromagnetic field or the electric field in order to define, in order to find out the value of capacitance. So you also know why is that, why is transposition very important because of the unbalanced distribution of inductance over there here, it would be an uh, imba proper uneven distribution of uh, capacitance as a result that happens usually in an unsymmetrical spaced conductors so if you prefer okay, transposition so that can be avoided so let's get started so capacitance between the conductors to neutral of three conductors will be unequal okay again it will be there you can see an imbalance here as a when we would you would find imbalance if the lines are not transposed due to transposition average capacitance of each conductor to neutral will be same. They exactly whatever we discussed in case of inductance. We should consider the sum of all charges over here for the sake of analysis as zero. So let us consider the radius of each conductor as R meters. So assuming that, that it is transposed, we can calculate the potential difference, assuming that the lines are transposed. So we need to consider the three conductors X, Y, and Z as shown in the figure. So first, let us start finding out the potential difference between phases X and Y, that is VXY in position, VXY in position one, that is denoted as VXY1, as shown in the figure. So you have to use the previous equation that we found in equation, that was the last equation that we ended up, that is 6.1. Considering that as general equation, you're supposed to find out the vol uh, voltage difference or the potential difference between phases X and Y. Okay. So this is the diagram wherein the D stands for distance between the two phases or two conductors, X, Y, X, Z is for 
distance x and z and t y z it is a distance between y and z so this is the equation based on equal 6 equation 6.1 if you apply the same over here as i said between conductor x and y you started off so when you started this off it is qx divided by 2 pi epsilon naught ln the distance by r and second one will obviously be opposite that is the reason you have r divided by dxy and the third one is nothing but the maximum distance so that is the reason you don't find r over here you will find the distance how did we get this equation this equation we have obtained considering uh, the general equation that you have obtained in a group of conductors so in position 2 the conductor x will take the position of conductor y and conductor y will take the position of conductor z and z will take the position of conductor x following a cyclic symmetry as i've already mentioned in the previous session of wherein we found out the value of inductance a cyclic symmetry is followed over here so x will be replaced by y y will be replaced by z and z will be replaced by x so if you uh, consider or know the equations in that format probably it would be very easy the potential difference between phases x and y in position 2 will be so this will be the expression then there is a cyclic symmetry that is followed you can clearly know so here in the previous case okay here it was x y d x y so in that case if it is cyclic symmetry it will be x will be y y will be z x is y and y is z okay the cyclic symmetry is followed over here okay and in a similar manner again if you find the potential difference between x and y in position 3 again a cyclic symmetry is followed you can see the distance dyz in vx2 or in vx3 it is nothing but d x z so y is replaced by z and z is replaced by x similarly here in the previous in the dyz in the denominator that is for q y y is again replaced by z and z is replaced by x in similar grounds the previous equation also okay a cyclic symmetry is followed so how do you find the average potential difference between phase x and y so you found out phase x and y with respect to position one position two and position three so if you want to know the average potential difference for phases x and y considering all the three positions you need to take an average so that average expression is this vxy is something but vxy vxy1 plus vxy2 plus vxy3 divided by the total three and this will be the simplified expression on simplification you will be getting one divided by two pi epsilon naught wherein the d values are considered as d equivalent and the other part is also considered as d equivalent so where d equivalent is nothing but cube root of dx by dyz and dx which is nothing but the geometric mean distance as already explained in the previous session so on simplification this will be the final expression so using previous equation 8 and previous equation 9 if you add it up if you sum it up this will be the final expression that we can get okay addition so wherein you have the component of x y part is over here and component of x z part is over here so what will on simplification what will be the expression so you have considered uh, you added the like term that that is the reason you are getting q 2 times qx land d equivalent by r and the other two values of qy charges qy and qz is same so qy and qz are summed up and you also know in the initially we have assumed that the charges sum of charges is zero therefore you get qy plus qz is nothing but qx as in shown in the above equation so when you add these two equation when you add these two equation so this is the I am adding and on simplification, whatever you have applied, that is qy plus qz is equal to minus qx. When you apply that, this will be the final expression. So again, in a balanced three-phase system, you know that vxy plus vxz is nothing but three times the position x with respect to neutral. That is, we are able to find out the line to neutral voltage. So how do you, this on applying, on using equation 10, you know, to get the, line to neutral voltage that is line x with respect to neutral this will be the expression that is 1 divided by 2 pi epsilon naught into 3 times of the charge qx ln d equivalent by r so what will be this expression 3 3 will get cancelled and the uh, voltage 
with respect to point x and neutral that is a line to neutral x is nothing but of one phase you can also call it as line to neutral voltage is nothing but one divided by two pi epsilon naught q x lan d equivalent divided by r therefore capacitance per phase to neutral is nothing but you know capacitance is nothing but the charge due ratio of charge divided by voltage so this will be the final expression that is 2 pi epsilon naught divided by lan d equivalent by r farad per meter if it was a single phase line what was the expression that we found it was 2 pi epsilon naught divided by lan d equivalent divided by r farads per meter but over here it's a three phase line so if in a single phase line it is just d by r in a three phase line it's nothing but d equivalent divided by r now let's move on to the next part so there you have considered unsymmetrical spacing and later you uh, in what is the problem in unsymmetrical spacing that capacitance was will not be equal so you consider transposition in order to balance over here the case is very simple it is capacitance of a symmetrically spaced three phase line three phase lines you have to imagine a triangle here with all uh, its distances are equal so if the lines are symmetrically spaced you know the three distances are dx y dy z and dx z when it is equilateral or it's symmetrical the distance of all the three will be same and it will be equal to d meters therefore the geometric mean distance will be equal to d that is cube root of dx y dy z and dx z will be equal to d so what will be the value of phase to neutral voltage here phase to neutral voltage over here is you're replacing one divided by two pi epsilon naught q x lan d equivalent is since it is symmetrical it becomes d divided by r if you want you can start from this previous derivation however you have done the unsymmetrical space since that you have got used to it the equation is written directly over here so and this is a phase to neutral how to find out the phase to neutral capacitance again you know cxn is nothing but q divided by qx divided by vxn so capacitance with respect to neutral is nothing but qx divided by vxn over here we'll be getting it as 2 pi epsilon naught divided by lan d by so lan d by r farads per meter so this is with respect to unsymmetrical spacing and for this unsymmetrical spacing and how do you find the value of capacitance so you have got to know to summarize we have started off with uh, finding electrical field intensity electric field intensity due to infinite ch charge you got to know what do you mean by a charge it's nothing but a property of matter wherein you can experience a you can experience a force when you're placing it in an electromagnetic field and we started off with charge again it's nothing but a it describes the static electric field because of the distribution of uh, charges electric charges and you got to know the expression of electric field intensity that electric field intensity in turn was used to find out the value of capacitance of a single phase line and we discussed capacitance in a group of conductors and that was a main equation or the general equation to find out the value of capacitance uh, in an unsymmetrically placed three phase line and also we were able to discuss uh, the, the value of capacitance or the procedure to find out the value of capacitance in a symmetrically spaced three-phase line. Okay, thank you.